it's Lisa with Ludomoth Creations and I am back and today I want to do a book review. So actually I've got two books that I want to review. I kind of read them back to back and I realized that they were kind of similar um, as far as like their layout and some content. So I thought, you know, let's kind of compare these two. Um, and as with everything that I do, y'all, I'm winging it. Um, <laughs> I did make a couple notes to myself and I did um, put some tabby tabs on one of these books. Didn't do it on the other one. Um, the other one speaks for itself. But anyways, so shit falls. Every single time I move, I'm tr I'm trying to knock all my shit over. Anyways, hi guys. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lisa. And on my channel, I like to do witchy things. And today, like I said, we're doing a book review. So first off, we're doing a review of The Witch's Guide to Manifestation witchcraft for the life you want it's written by mystic dylan it's written by a dude um not that that's weird i mean gerald gardner and scott cunningham and all these people are dudes but anyways so there you go there's that and then the other one is the eclectic witches book of shadows witchy wisdom at your fingertips by deborah blake now we know who deborah blake is all right deborah blake has the um well it says back here the Everyday Witch Tarot, The Everyday uh, Witch Oracle. Oh my gosh, what is going on with my shop? <laughs> um, Everyday Witchcraft, The Little Book of Cat Magic, The Witch's Broom. She um, contributes to, I believe she contributes to a lot of the Llewellyn, like their um, like almanacs and stuff like that. I wonder if it says, um, she's got tons of books. Like I have books on my, I've got books on my, um, my Kindle app and stuff like that. Um, you know what? I didn't realize this, but she actually does a paranormal romance and urban fantasy series. There you go. Um, yeah, I don't know that it says her other books, but anyways. Okay. So let's get into this. Um, I'm going to talk a tiny bit about some things and then I'm going to turn the camera around so you can actually see the book. Uh, the books, plural. Okay, so The Witch's Guide to Manifestation. First off, this cover is freaking gorgeous. And I have to tell you, okay, we're going to have to turn my phone on silent. <laughs> Somebody's favoriting a bunch of things in my shop. I'm not upset about it. If you guys want to favorite some things in my shop or purchase some things in my shop, it's listed below. It says My Witchy Store, Luna Moth Creations Co. All right, now that I've gotten that out of the way. Uh, this cover is so beautiful. Like, look at that freaking moth. And then the word manifestation. So I have to be honest, I didn't really read what this book was about. Um, the cover of the book and the word manifestation, I was like, let's do this. So that's why I bought this book. <laughs> um, and then I realized it is, th this is a book for more beginners. It's a, it's, it's got a reference, you know, a bunch of references, uh, like correspondences, you know, but I did have a few problems with this book that I will get into when I, um, face the camera down so you can see, but I have to tell you the reason I bought this book is because the cover is gorgeous and it says the word manifestation. Um, not that I really feel like this is a guide to manifestation by any means. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, but good marketing guys. This is a beautiful book like inside and out. There's some gorgeous um, pictures in, inside and I'll show you guys that. All right, as far as the um, the Eclectic Witches Book of Shadows by Deborah Blake, number one, I bought this because it's Deborah Blake because I love her writing style. Um, she is, she's been a witch for a long time, y'all. She's got experience. She knows what she's talking about. She contributes to a lot of, um, like I said, Llewellyn books and um, to me, she is a trusted source in the witchcraft world. And um, also, cover of this book, gorgeous. There is a Luna Moth, guys. Luna Moth. Uh, there's a Luna Moth right there. And of course, there's a kitty cat. I think she has a kitty cat like on everything. Like all her stuff has kitty cats on it. Um, I do have her um, Everyday Witch Tarot deck. I don't have the Oracle deck. Um, it is on my wish list, but anyways. So, and it's a hardcover book. Like, I love hardcover books. They're beautiful. Uh, so, anyways, there's that. I, I will buy anything that she puts out. 
because I love her. But anyways, okay. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. Actually, I'm going to get my phone out. My phone's gonna be our, our thing. And we're gonna get into these books and talk a little bit more about them so you guys can decide if they're books that you wanna get. So I will be right back. All right, guys. So let's first talk about The Witch's Guide to Manifestation, Witchcraft for the Life You Want. Okay, um, I don't feel like this is a guide to manifestation. Um, I felt like it was just a book of correspondences. Um, but for somebody who's just beginning, I feel like there's some good, you know, breakdown of some things. Um, it's a quick and easy read. It's it's not too long. It's got, uh, let's see here, 162 pages worth. Um, it's very pretty, though. It's very aesthetically pleasing. So I, I can appreciate that. Um so we've got On Magic and Manifestation, Where the Magic Begins, Manifestation and Practice, Methods of Manifestation, Considerations When Making Magic, Practical Spells and Ritual Manifestation, and then Owning Your Manifestation. Um, I really, uh, I don't like that they keep saying manifestation because I did not feel like this was a guide to manifesting. Um, so, I mean, it just talks about what magic is history and use, how does it work, blah, 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 um, different things that you can do as far as vision board, intention, journaling, uh, visualization, law of attraction, blah, 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 um, the science behind it. All right, so these are just whatever. I'm going to jump over here. So this just gives you a little bit of an overview of a lot of different um, different things like the basically the basics like it said so intention setting um, centering grounding um, shielding divination ritual after the practice blah 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 eh, it's so beautiful anyways the book is gorgeous all right so then it talks about uh, working with sigils altars candle magic like cleansing meditation it's just a very short overview of a lot of different witchcraft things to me this is more of a witchcraft 101 book rather than a this is how you manifest things right i mean yes you can use this information to manifest the things that you want um but it's not really telling you kind of like a step by step let's this is how you should you know manifest um which is what I really wanted. He's very interested in these sweet jars. He, he talks about them more than once. Um, all right. So this is one of the problems that I had with this book. I actually bookmarked it. So he talks about some magical deities, right? So he says Hecate and Isis. Okay. Those are, those are pretty widely used, um, deities. Thoth, um, you know, I enjoy Thoth because I love the Egyptian pantheon, but I don't know that everybody is working with that one. And I feel like this is a little misleading as far as his list of deities for somebody who's new and starting out. Could this give you like um, something different to look at? Sure, definitely could. But for somebody new that's um, kind of coming into the craft, some of these deities, you're like, who the fuck are they? Excuse my French. All right, so Diana, okay. Sir Dewin, yeah. Circe, uh, not so widely used. Um, and then I don't know who the hell this is. Pasiphae and Hecca. Um, I, I'm into Egyptian stuff and I don't know who the heck Hecca is. And then we have Buca. I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But to me, this is misleading if you're like a new witch and you're like, okay, these are the deities that are most widely, you know, worked with and used. No, they're not. They're really not. So Hecate and Isis, yeah, I feel like those are pretty good. Sarah Dwin, Diana, um, yeah. All right. So then it gives you just a little overview of, um, I don't know why it had tarot in there, like in a very small sense, you know. Um, then it just talks about different correspondences, like the phases of the moon. Um, which, like, again, that's some good things to consider. But again, to me, this book is not about how to manifest necessarily. It's, here's a little tiny overview of lots of things witchcraft. And then it talks about the seasons, um, the uh, days of the week, and what they kind of stand for. This is something that I also had an issue with. 
um, it talks about holidays. So the witch's Sabbaths, right? Um, the winter solstice, yes, definitely. Um, this one here, I'm like, I don't know who celebrates this. I mean, New Year's Day, sure, but it, it, in a witch's thing, I don't know about that. This one, like, this is not something that typical, like, the wheel of the year, it's not in. Winter solstices and Midsummer's Day, uh, no, that's Midsummer's Day. Autumn Equinox, that is, and Samhain. So, they're missing a bunch of key witches' sabbats in here. So, I feel like this is very misleading and confusing for, like, a new witch. So, we've got Imbolc. So, these are our, our uh, eight sabbats. Imbolc, Astera, Beltane, Litha, uh, Lunasa, Mabin, Samhain, and Yule. So those are the typical celebrated witches' Sabbaths. So I'm confused by what the hell he's got going in here. I don't know if he's just trying to be different and give you something um, that maybe other books don't have. I don't know. But again, I feel like this is super misleading for new uh, witches to the craft. All right. And then they go over times of day that could be, you know, this is good for this type of manifestation, I guess. I don't know. Like noon, it says good for business and financial success, blah, blah, blah. And then it talks about the different elements. I, why did I do that? Oh, I know why I, I did this. So with the element, he gives you some correspondences as far as like astrological signs, like air is um, he actually gives you the right ones. We've got Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Okay, that's true. For Earth, the only one that he told you was um, Taurus, but he leaves out Virgo and Capricorn. So I was like, okay, I, what? I don't know if it was like a, like a misprint, like he forgot to do that, but the other elements, he does give you all of the um, astrological signs that go along with that. So then we have an overview of colors like red, attraction, sensuality, desire, blah, blah. So you could use that with candle magic or even crystals or whatever. And then it's a brief overview here on the Zodiac. Um, and then it's got kind of information on different numbers. So like I said, this is a very quick overview on a lot of different things that you can use these correspondences for your manifestation, but this is not a book to teach you how to manifest. Um, but beautiful. Like, I love the artwork. It's so, like, whimsical and cute. All right. And then it talks about, like, your must, like, what you need, must-haves. And it's, like, candles, salt, herbs, matches, incense burner, incense, cords, mortar and pestle, feathers, um, certain crystals, water, mason jars, olive oil. Like, you, these are not must-haves. Like, literally, guys, this is one thing that I hate about um, when new people come into the craft, they feel like they have to get all of these things. To be a witch, you have to have every crystal. Um, you you have to work with herbs. You So you need a, a mortar and pestle, you know. you To make a spell jar, you've got to have all these different ingredients, blah, blah, blah. Guys, you don't. The magic is inside of you and if the only thing that you have is you and your mind and visualization that's all you need don't go break the bank buying all this stuff because you think you need it to be a, a, a witch this that's one of the things that i always um kind of preach i guess <laughs> that that you don't need all of those things guys I don't, I, I hate for new witches to like go in debt, <laughs> getting all the things that they think they're supposed to have. So I hate that he's got this huge ass list of things that you must have, must have. And then he goes to on to nice to have, which is a whole bunch of other stuff. Now listen, if you want to get all this stuff and you have the finances to do it, awesome. Go do it. It's fun. Listen, I have a bunch of stuff. <laughs> you guys know. You watch my videos. <laughs> um, but do I need all of this? No. They're wants. You know? You, I, I don't want some young baby nurse. Or baby nurse? That ain't right. I am a nurse, guys. <laughs> young baby witch to go out and break the bank for this stuff. All right. And then it does talk about some spells, different kinds of things like um, spell pouch um, enchantment sprays, magical burn bundles, you know, which would be like, um, 
like a sage bundle, which is ladder, which is bottle. And then it goes in and gives you some, some spells. Um, I do feel like this is geared towards more younger people because he makes a comment in here. I'm trying to think of what it was. I, I can't remember exactly where it was, but it says something about um, giving you ideas. Like, do you want to manifest that new game? Like a new, like, um, like video game or something, I thought he said. And I was like, wait, what? Like, I'm not manifesting no many video games up in here. <laughs> if you're younger and you want to manifest um, the money to get a video game, hey, that's awesome. Um, I personally am just not going to do that. I'm 46 years old. <laughs> I, I don't play video games. I mean, I know that some people do um, that are my age, but whatever. Anyways, so he's got some uh, different spells here um, for you guys to try. Some of them were kind of cute. Some of them, meh. Um, I'm, I'm more about creating your own spells, but again, that's why I, I feel like this book should have given you more tools to learn how to manifest, um, so that you can create your own spells, which, you know, there are correspondence in hidden here that you can probably, he does talk about customizing your own spells, modifying ingredients. So there's that. Um, and then I do enjoy this little table of correspondence in the back. So they've got just a brief overview of all the kind of things that, um, we've got candles, colors, herbs, oils, um, days of the week, lunar cycles, stones. Um, and then there's a glossary. Um, the author is a young guy. This is mystic Dylan. <laughs> He's looking pretty mystic out in the forest there. He owns a, um, a, witchcraft store which i thought was pretty freaking cool out in california um more power to him i wish that i had um more of a store than i actually currently have <laughs> so uh props to mystic dylan but yeah um i mean it's an easy read it's super beautiful um i'm gonna keep it because i just love the artwork in it um and it does it's a quick little little overview of some things so but for this to be a book about really learning how to manifest I don't really know about all that. Okay, so let's jump over here to the eclectic, which is, let me get my camera a little bit more. There, so you can see the whole book. Um, move this out of the way. All right, so, and one thing I wanted to say about this, I don't know Mystic Dylan. I don't know if um, he knows what he's talking about. I don't know how long he's been practicing. I mean, I think it said, which, that doesn't really mean it says 10 years for over 10 years. I don't know that he's like your best go-to guy for, um, for information. Now, Deborah Blake, on the other hand, guys, she is going to give you the goods right now. This book equally beautiful. So this book is designed to actually give you the start of a book of shadows plus use it as your book of shadows. There's actually spots in here for you guys to add in your own things that, that you come across, right? You could actually add some things right here. Okay. So, and I also love this. She does a little book blessing in here. Hopefully you guys can still see this in the camera. Um, and I love that. That's so cool. All right. So there's Deborah Blake. Oh, she's holding like a beautiful crystal. <laughs> there she is. If you guys didn't know who Deborah Blake was. All right. So there is a spot for, look how cute all this illustration is. I love, I love, love, love the illustrations in both books. Both books had beautiful illustrations and just with her having that Luna moth. Oh my God, y'all. Sorry. I had to drink a, take a drink of my monster, but holy shit. Like, look at this. Look at this. Like if you buy this for nothing else but the artwork, guys, I, I'm all for it. Okay, so this book to me kind of is the same as, okay, that doesn't make sense. It's not the same as the book that we just looked at, but it has a lot of correspondences. So this to me is good for new witches, but it's also a good reference source for um, people who have been practicing for a while. 
Um, and again, she talks about how she can't draw, like her illustrations are from a different, it's a different artist. I don't remember if it says, but I believe it's the same artist that does her, um, illustrations, Mickey Mueller. Uh, hopefully I got that right. I believe that it's the same artist for her, um, decks. So if you like that artist, you're going to love this book. So she talks about how she can't draw and she wants a beautiful book of shadows. So she kind of created this book where it is gorgeous and you can use this as your book of shadows and add to it. So it gives you kind of an overview about that. So here's spots that you can write here. It talks about how to use the book. And then we're going to go into all different areas of witchcraft, just like the other book did. But to me, um, this is still a quick and easy read. It's, you know, short blurbs about things, but... I feel like the information in here is more valuable and I trust my source more. I don't mean to be like a complete butthole to the other book, but I just felt more towards this book. So we talk about herbs and then she has some of her favorite ones. And then she leaves you spaces if there's some herbs that you want to write, what you have learned about those herbs. Um, if there's a herb that you use often, you can add this to here. So again, here's some information on herbs, spaces to write, love, love, love. And of course, guys, don't forget, I do have pretty much every herb in here um, in my witchy store. It's linked below, whoops, <laughs> my witchy store. It's Luna Moth Creations Co. on Etsy. I sell herbs by the jar. All right, so lots of herb information. And she talks about a cautionary tale of something that happened to her. <laughs> but lots of room to actually write your own information. And then she talks about how to use herbs. Um, making potions. There's a little which is flying ointment situation. Healing teas, ointments again. Um, baths, shower sprays, incense, sachets. How to dry herbs. More spots to write what you want um, with your herbs. And then we move into stones, of course, gorgeous illustrations and space for you to write your own stuff. And then she goes into some of her favorite stones and their magical uses. Still lots of space. And of course, I will be adding crystals to my shop. I actually just filmed an unboxing of a bunch of my crystals. It's just gonna take me a minute to inventory, photograph, uh, price and put up the listing. So be on the lookout for that guys. Hopefully I will have that by next week. Um, hopefully I can get all that done this weekend so you guys can start buying crystals. Yay for me. Okay. So more crystals. And then she gives you some inexpensive substitutions, like instead of Jade, which is more expensive, you could choose green adventuring. Um, but anyways, we've got quick overviews of all that. Stones in their forms. Okay, stone sources, blah, 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 how to use them. So she's got um, to reinforce spells, charm bags, putting in your pocket decoration, how to cleanse your stones, more spots so you can write your favorite stones and the correspondences that you have found from other books or online or whatever. So then we move into candles. Again, gorgeous freaking illustration. Um, talks about the different uh, materials that candles can come in and then different shapes, more room to write your stuff. And then um, uses by color, just a general guide, she said. How to use candles. Consecrating and anointing. More room to write in your book of shadows. Magical recipes. I believe these are, yes, essential oils. So she gives you some information here. Like she gives you um, some actual blends. So we've got energy, strength, and courage. So we've got cinnamon, ginger, lemon, or orange. So she gives you some, some little ideas of that. I actually just sent this beautiful, one of these little perfume bottles, um, to the winner of my giveaway <laughs> that just went out in the mail. Yay for farm girl. All right. And then she talks about charm bags and different, um, 
things like again so we've got energy strength and courage so she gives you herbs and then she gives you stones that you can put in there and then symbols and colors you want to use for that so i love that that she's giving you all the different correspondences for that one intention right for love you're going to use some lavender you're going to use some um, amethyst rose quartz you're going to maybe use the Feiyu um, rune symbol. You're going to use pink or red. So I love that. She gives you some overview of that. And then charm bags for prosperity. There's a little blurb there. Poppets. And she talks about um, actually creating um, a poppet. More room to write all of your stuff. Tons of room. All right, and then we go into divination, and then look, she's got illustrations of her actual cards. I love it. <laughs> and some runes, some tea leaves, dream journal. Love it. She talks briefly about tarot. She's, tarot is such a huge monster of a um, divination that it's hard to put into one of these short little books. And then she has an overview of oracle um, cards. She writes some of her favorite decks. Of course, they are hers, <laughs> plus the, the classic right away. Little overview of some runes, scrying, pendulums. Um, she gives you a little easy thing there. Dream divination, dream charm bag. Love it. Lots of room to write. And then we go into some overview of gods and goddesses. Love it. We've got some green man. Um, gods and goddesses by their attributes. So we've got love. So you might want to work with Aphrodite. Um, wisdom. You might want to work with Athena. Um, springtime, Ostara. So I love that she kind of breaks them down. Some of the um, more used, some of these, I, you know, I've never heard of Morpheus. I mean, wasn't he in the Matrix? <laughs> I don't know him as a god, but anyways, he would be used for healing, peace, and rest. So there you go. And then um, she breaks down the elements so like Apollo would be if you were want to work with sun or like fire. Um, Gaia obviously would be earth. So we've got home and home and hearth, uh, animals, some of these that work with animals like Basset would be your um, if you want to do some cat magic. So kind of really cool. She's broken them down so you can be like, oh, protection. Basset is also good for protection. All right, and then we talk about some moon goddesses, more places to write all your business, and then invocations and quarter calls. I really love this. Um, she's given you kind of a, a general invocation here, some full moon, new moon. These are things that she uses in her actual coven, so I love that, that she's sharing that. Um, with y'all. And then she gives you some invocations for Sabbaths. So in bulk, spring equinox, which is also Astara, Beltane, summer solstice, Litha, Lamas, which is also Lunasa, uh, autumn equinox is uh, Maven, Sawan, Yule. So super cool. Then she gives you quarter calls, north, uh, west, east, south. Did I just do that all wrong? <laughs> some basic calls there more quarter calls. I love it. So this is a really good overview of lots of things that you can use um, in casting spells and performing rituals. And then she goes into um, information on spells. Spell casting checklist, lunar love, um, working with the elements, days of the week. So see some of these correspondences you had seen in that other book that I, um, that I just reviewed. But again, I feel like this book is a little more in depth. It's still a quick overview, but a little more in depth. And again, I just really connect to this book more. And I feel like the source is very knowledgeable and a trustworthy source, right? Um, so some basic spells um, for different intentions there. Book of Shadows Blessing, some handy spells, banishing, balance, inspiration, creativity. Um, space to write some spells that you have used, some spell kits, love. We've got correspondences to put in there. And then um, she's got like a like an invocation or, or just wording for that spell. More room to write. And then she goes into talking about rituals. And we've got the uh, the three of cups 
dancing here <laughs> under the moon. Love it. So ritual checklist. Uh, ritual elements that you may want to use. Again, she actually says in here the same thing that I say. If all that you have is yourself and your imagination visualization skills, girl, you've got it. Boy, if there any guys, I don't know. <laughs> um, casting circle. She talks about if you're going to do ritual with a group or solitary. So I love that. Basic full moon ritual. Uh, simple Sabbath ritual, lots of different little rituals in here. Again, space to write in your book of shadows. Then she's got some recipes. So like kitchen witchery. Um, so we've got some recipes here for different cookies and cakes and bread. Um, so that's pretty awesome. And then it talks more about kitchen witchery. I love that spoon. Here's some checklists. So if you're going to want to do a kitchen witchery spell for love, she gives you some ingredients that would work for that. And then all these other correspondences for prosperity. And then she gives you actual really awesome more recipes. Love. And then she gives you some recommended reading further. And then more feast foods. So for Imbolc, Spring Equinox different sabbats love 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 and then more spaces to write in your book of shadows and then um, some correspondences so she breaks it down again so if you want to just come to the back love we've got our goddesses our stones our herbs our colors and our rune symbols and then you could write more correspondences that you have used or have found in other books um, here for love and again, breaks it down to other um, intention settings. So that, my friends, is the Eclectic Witch's Book of Shadows, Witchy Wisdom at your... Sorry about that. My alarm went off. It's time for me to go to work. <laughs> so, and then this is Mickey Mueller. She is the um, illustrator for this book, and I believe um, Deborah Blake's Tarot and Oracle deck. So there you have it. There you are. I love this book. I think this is a great little handy um, correspondence book. This is good for new witches. This is good for experienced witches to have a quick reference to try some different spells. I love that Deborah actually wrote in some things that she uses in her own coven as far as like quarter calls and um, some recipes and some rituals and stuff like that. I think that's super awesome. Um... And if you are not good at having a beautiful, like beautiful handwriting and all that good stuff, you've got a beautiful book of shadows right here, guys. And you could add a few things in there. You can put some stickers in here, whatever you want to do. So I, I really recommend this book. I think it's super adorably cute and it's a quick, easy reference book. So that is it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to my little book review of these two books. Hopefully um, they have helped you to decide if these books are something that you would enjoy to include in your book collection, which my book collection is humongous and I need to sit down and read more. <laughs> I should have another book review coming up for you guys soon because I'm almost done with another book on astrology. Yay! Um, so guys, thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below what you think. Have you read these books? What do you think? Are they something that you would like to add? And if you guys are not a current subscriber, I would love if you'd hit that subscribe button in the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. If you're already a subscriber, thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all. And until next time, have a great day. Bye.